Well, here we are, part three of our stress lectures. Uh, you guys remember this up here, talking about adaptive stress, building hope, and maladaptive stress, taking away hope and increasing instability. Well, it's really important to understand something. Um, these are not just concepts that people invented out of their butts. <laughs> and they didn't create them out of their imaginations either. Uh, people used to think these things, but what turns out is that as we've been able to scan the brain with more detail in the last 30 years in particular, we can really see the brain as it's working. We started to notice something, that your base needs are connected to your brainstem. Your safety needs are connected to your cerebellum and the intuitive part of your brain called the midbrain. Your sense of love and belonging is connected to your memory sections, which is right here in the middle, and the connective tissue in the, in the center. Your belief in yourself comes from your senses of the world, okay, your sensory organs, and then all of your self-actualization, the things that help you become you, come from abstract ideas or high-thinking ideas uh, in the front of your brain. And there's this little tiny red thing here. Um, and that little tiny red thing doesn't mature until you're, uh, for women, about 23 or 24, men, 27 to 28. Uh, yes, you're not mature when you turn 18. It takes another 10 years, usually. Uh, guys, and it takes another five years for women. Well, what does this what does this mean? Well, all of this kind of works together. Now, remember, there are more connections inside of your brain than there are stars in the galaxy. Um, there are about eighty billion neurons. Each of those neurons have uh, between ten and a hundred helper cells called glial cells. The brain tumor my wife had was made. Uh, almost entirely, of glial cells. All the helper cells got cancer, and that's what caused the tumor. Um, and so I've, I've had to learn a lot about brains as a result of uh, her illness. Well, all of this kind of works together in a pretty cool way. It helps us figure out our context. It organizes ourselves. It gives us a philosophy about the world. It helps us understand and control our environment. It helps us understand that there is cause and effect. Again, going to the stove, I touch the stove, it's hot. Mm. When things get hot, they hurt. It helps us establish boundaries, like you probably shouldn't be eating chips in church. Um, generally, not, not a good idea. Um, and you probably shouldn't be, um, uh, you know, doing worship during the NBA playoffs. There's just certain places and times to do things. Uh, you seeking balance, again, comes from this thing. The uh, contentment and the content of your life, all of the information that makes your life possible, is, again, comes all through this brain. And the dynamic coherence, in other words, you know that certain things change over time. You know that people's bodies do certain things when they get older. They become less capable. So challenging great-grandpa to a sprinting race is probably not the best thing for his health. Just like him challenging you to a storytelling contest, he's going to beat you. All of this is a fancy bu pants bunch of ways to say we, ha we are made of mind, body, and spirit. Okay? We are co-operational, simultaneous, negotiated, meaning agency of continued essence, dynamic, interdependent, um, holographic, rhizomatic, connected, interdependent, causal agents of the implicate order. That's a fancy way to say we have physical bodies, mental minds, and spiritual spirits. The body, the physical phenomena, allows us to have objective thoughts. <laughs> Bad. The mind gives us a mental landscape, subjective thoughts, bath, and spirit gives us spiritual thoughts, intuitive thoughts, and helps us find beyond. Knowledge, knowing, and understanding. Knowledge is shaped by purpose. Knowing is prioritized by function. And understanding that endures for a reason is understood through understanding. 
We are basically crystals of being. We are basically things that are processes. We're human, baby, and that's kind of cool. Now, I'm not going to get in any deeper than this, but I could. <laughs> this is actually uh, something that shows us how the stress cycle works on a medical level. Now, and another way to look at it as a systemic level, again, not going to get into these too deep, but you need to know about stress is this. There are typically three levels, three things that happen in order with a typical stress event, okay? The stress event happens, you have a stress response, and then you learn from it. You either learn to keep thinking about the stress or you learn to adapt to it, okay? So the stress event, the stressor, remember, are the things causing imbalance. A stress response is a disruption of fancy pants alert, allostasis. In other words, the stress response um, is a dis excuse me, the stress response is a response to an imbalance in homeostasis. Allostasis brings us right back in to a sense of balance. Again, the psychosocial immunoendocrine logical system, PMI system, is basically, we'll call it, the stress response system. It's a system of many, many, many things going on. Your conscious nervous system, your subconscious nervous system, your cardiovascular system, your heart, your immune system, your digestive system, your tummy, your hormonal system, your reproductive, all of it. All of it starts happening at the exact same time when you have a stress response. So when you have butterflies in your stomach from seeing somebody you think is cute, okay? When you feel fear from somebody knocking on your door at 3 a.m., when you feel um, excited because you're going to your cousins and you guys always have a good time, okay? All of these things are stress responses. So again, they're not good or bad. All of them are happening at once. And that's why stress can be so overwhelming. What we have to do is to remember that we can learn from the stress. If you have a stress event and it messes with your mind and all this stuff flows through your mind and your body, what you need to remember is that the people who love you are the ones who can help you the most with the stress. They are the ones that you can talk to. And even strangers sometimes are good just to talk to because they're not judging you because they can't because they don't know you. The trick here is, is to remember these things. Stress is normal. You don't get to act out. It's not good or bad. And everybody feels it. Stress is a sign to your consciousness, to the part of your brain that is aware, that you need to pay attention and learn something. So when you're feeling stress, take a moment, take a breath, step back, and realize the universe is teaching you something. Ask yourself, am I ready to learn? <laughs>